Hello everyone, this is GL1 and welcome to RC STEM class number 9. And this is going to be a little bit different because this is actually a kit, like a science engineering kit, that also is remote controlled. Uh, and so that's a little different than just going through already pre constructed radio controlled vehicles and then deconstructing how they were put together. This kit uses infrared frequency for its remote. So it's a wireless remote, just like you have for your television. And this is the transmitter that transmits infrared frequency. And this is your receiving module back here. And that receives infrared uh, signals from the remote. And then you have 4.5 volts uh, there. You have three AA batteries, and then those each connect to a wire connector that has a red and black wire inside. You can see that positive and negative. That connects to a motor module, in this case, this module down here. So this is this crazy looking vehicle that I've built. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that. All right, so it has like a helicopter blade and has motors on the bottom. And I'm going to show you how all that works um, in a bit. So this remote control machines construction kit, um, I got at a secondhand store for $5 and did not have the instructions with it. But it appears to have all the pieces and works just fine. And you can build a whole bunch of different kits with it and then you can customize it however you'd like but it it has a crane it has various uh cars things that's you know cars that steer things that don't steer but do other things and then you have a, a robot arm that can grab things and turn uh, but what's most important with this is the principles that i have been going through with these stem classes with you starting episode 101 with stem class number one now we're on nine and gradually what I've been doing is uh, acclimating you to the engineering technology that goes into producing these various radio controlled vehicles. And I've been gradually working from less sophisticated to more sophisticated. And sometimes it's not just a matter of sophistication, but it's just a matter of the differences. And I've always appreciated how great these vehicles are and how they're put together and I really like a kit like this because it really can show you what's going on inside some of those RC vehicles so that you can appreciate them and see just how neat they are and how reliable they are too because you know you're taking those vehicles and you're you know thrashing them around on on gravel or jumping them you know or smashing them into a curb and all of those parts have to stay together and when you build a science kit like this, um, it's rather delicate, but it does demonstrate all the principles. So the first principle here, as I uh, indicated, is that this is a infrared remote. So it's not a radio frequency. Now, a radio frequency remote, like we talk about in the other shows, where we have uh, 27 megahertz, 49 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, those you can aim anywhere, and then when you when you you know move your um, levers, right, your vehicle responds. You even have televisions where you have to point the remote at the TV to change a channel, and you have remotes that you don't. And the the ones that you don't are radio frequency, and the ones that you do are infrared frequency. So this is infrared. Now the infrared on this is so good that you can have this remote. In the front of the vehicle or um, you know on the other side this is like I said this is the receiving uh, sensor for it but it, it actually will control it even from the other side so the infrared light is bouncing off of things and hitting this and giving it the signal now it's not going to go as far as a radio frequency but you know certainly for a project kit I don't think that's what you need I think you just want to build something demonstrate what you've built and then move on now in our first STEM class, uh, episode 101, I had a, a 1978 Barbie 
Corvette that was a wired remote control that had two motors in the front. And when you applied, the, when you turned the remote one way, it would apply voltage to the right motor and, and that motor would turn and steer the car to the left. And when you would apply voltage, uh, you turn the wheel the other way, it would apply voltage to the left side, and then that motor would go, the other one would disengage, and then it would turn the car to the right. Well, this kit came with three motors. So I was able to achieve the same kind of action that that Corvette has, moving forward, uh, moving backwards, and turning forward and backwards in the same manner. However, now I can do it wirelessly. And uh, I'm, sh I'm sure they could do it wirelessly back then, but it probably was a matter of cost because as, as things have moved on, the technology uh, cost has gone down. Now, when I put this vehicle together, and I'm going to sh actually I'm going to show you it move right now. So, you turn the remote on, and then that sends out some kind of sensor to turn the receiving module on. And sometimes it works right away, and sometimes it doesn't. All right, this is one of those where it doesn't. Let's try that again. It's going to be stubborn. All right, well. It'll probably start working in a bit. I've had that happen before. All right. So we have two motors. We have a motor for the right wheel, your perspective, the left, and a motor for uh, the left wheel. Okay. And so when it's given a signal, and you can see it turning, you can see maybe the gears turning inside. Okay. This is going to turn this wheel, and it's going to turn the vehicle this way. And when I apply voltage to this, it's going to turn the vehicle the other way. And if you do both at the same time, it goes straight. And it works exactly the same in reverse, where if you do both motors, it takes it in reverse straight. And you can turn it in reverse by one motor or the other. Let's see if it's going to cooperate now. There we go. Okay, so let's move this thing along here. I want, to sh want you to see see it move here without it falling off the table, right? All right. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to go backwards. So it doesn't have digitally proportional steering or speed control. So it's just on or off. So you, I could actually end up running it right off the table. It doesn't have as much control. But you can see that it does steer. So if I, let's say I just move that motor, right? It steers to the left. And if I move the other, it steers the other direction. And then if I hit both at the same time, it's going to go in reverse. Okay? All right. So full uh, directional control was achieved. However, there was another consideration while constructing this. Uh, this piece here, the steering, the back of it steers. Okay? And I had to place this tower close enough to this so that it would stop because when I didn't do that the first time uh, what would happen is is it this would go too far in it, th there was nothing stopping it and then it would get too short of an area and the whole thing would fall over so when you're building something like this you do have to consider you don't want it to oversteer all right and um, if I had enough uh, pieces I could have had an, the wheels further out and that would give it even greater stability but with what I was constructing I didn't I had to uh, be clever about how I utilize the pieces here I don't think there's any pieces missing I think it just didn't come with a lot of pieces for for doing certain things so sometimes what I had to do is I had to use a gear as a spacer or to even just hold things on and I'll try to point that out because it might be a little confusing when you're looking at this sometimes. So, all right, so what we have here is a simple connection for the actual moving of the vehicle. All right, we have uh, just a motor connected to a shaft to a wheel, okay? Now, the more sophisticated part is what happens next. All right, so see that? So now there's two things that are moving and what we have is we have a helicopter blade turning on top at one speed and we have I don't know like some kind of 
oh, battle unit <laughs> that's turning, or like a drill, actually. Uh, maybe like a, you could pretend that the red things on the front are like laser drills. And that's turning at obviously a much slower speed. But it's one motor that is turning both of these spinning pieces at two different speeds. So how does that happen? Well, that happens with gear ratios. And as we've learned in some of the other uh, classes, uh, you know, we have the, let's see, I think it's one class 125 and 132, uh, one where I was constructing the solar-powered solar system, which had a worm gear, uh, and we have a worm gear actually here, and, and then there was the uh, class uh, one, you know, 125 is the one where I built the space station and had to put together uh, a module, uh, the motor housing uh, module for that. All right, so this has all your motor housing all in one, and you get to see that. They, you know, they made that clear. So you can see inside here, move that wire out of the way. You can see there's a motor. See that silver piece in there? That's the motor. And then that's going to turn this gear, and then that's going to go up to that shaft. So you see that? And actually, we can even see it from a different angle on one of these driving motors. Okay. So what you have here, I think I can turn this upside down. I don't want it to fall apart. All right. So this is the silver part is the motor. And then that's turning a series of gears, which which connects to this shaft, which can come out easily. All right, so see that? Ah, there we go. That's a really good deal. Here we go. Okay, so see, now that's that really small pinion gear that's coming from the motor, going through various gears to move, to get enough space to move it over to this spinning piece here that is the shaft connector. Okay, so then you just press that in there. Okay, and then you have your wheel. All right, so this motor here, all right, which is our green buttons, okay. All right, so the motor in there is spinning. This is a worm gear, and that is connecting to a bevel gear. So worm gears and bevel gears are for changing direction of force. So what we have is we have a gear turning vertically, and then that's connecting to this beveled gear. Now a bevel gear, the reason it's called a bevel gear, a bevel is an edge that is, uh, I'm, I'm thinking carpentry, is sanded at an angle, okay? So it's a gear that is constructed that has a, a curved angle on it, okay? So the worm gear can connect to a bevel gear, this yellow bevel gear, all right, so now we're changing the direction from vertical, okay, to a horizontal force, which is then connected to the same shaft that has this chain gear on, okay, like a bicycle, right? And so then that's turning chain, which is then moving up to another chain gear, which is turning another shaft, which then is connected to a bevel gear, which is connected to another bevel gear. So you can go worm gear to bevel gear and bevel gear to bevel gear. So we're changing the direction of force again at a right angle. So you have this gear turning right horizontally, uh, vertically, and then that's, changed, that's turning this gear that's horizontal and creating a helicopter blade effect. And the only way to connect, well with the pieces I had left, was to use the other wheel and tire to connect these helicopter blades on. So that's where the other wheel went. All right. And then the other, like, so the, the first bevel gear is turning a red, actually, it's really difficult to see a little bit inside here. All right, here we go. So you could see that this shaft, okay, so we have the, you have the worm gear here, turning this bevel gear, which is turning this small red bevel gear, which is turning a large yellow bevel gear, again, changing the direction of force again, which is then turning this laser drill, okay? So 
I think what's in, most important, though, to note here is that they're moving at two different speeds, right? You have the helicopter blade moving significantly faster than the laser drill spinning. And how is that happening? Because we only have one motor that is spinning at one speed. Well, that happens because of gear ratios. So what we have here is ultimately the gears that are turning the laser drill is a small gear turning a large gear, okay, which is slower than a large gear turning a small gear. So the large gear has to spin less times to spin that red gear more times. Does that make sense? So every time the red gear, I mean the yellow gear in this example on the top one, okay? So when the yellow gear makes a revolution all the way around, it's traveling a greater distance than the small red gear would do if it traveled all the way around. So as we turn the yellow gear all the way around, it's spinning that red gear more times to go the same distance as the yellow gear, and that is what's producing a greater speed. The opposite of that is when we have a small gear turning a large gear. The small gear is turning at one speed, but it can't turn that large gear faster. It's, the large gear is traveling at the speed of the small gear, but it has, it's going to take longer for it to make one revolution because the smaller gear is just, it's less, travels less distance, all the circumference of it. So then what you end up with is two different speeds for two different things that you're moving. And I really wanted to demonstrate that principle uh, because it's really fascinating, I think, to understand as you get into radio-controlled vehicles or really any engineered uh, you know, device uh, that is constructed with gears, that there's a lot going on. And when you have a radio control car, you know, they're, they're quite durable. They smash into curbs and they jump and they stay together. Uh, this, you know, would not survive anything like that. But it's all the same pieces uh, in terms of what it's able to achieve. And it's, this is actually pretty sophisticated. This has uh, what's called three channels. So we have three different motors that are activated by three separate channels on this remote, right? You have channel one for one motor, channel two, and channel three, all for different motors. That's going to be important because as we move forward with some of the other vehicles that I have, uh, one of them has 11 channels, and they can get really sophisticated. And not only are they 11 channels, but they're all digitally proportional channels. And I'm not going to tell you what that vehicle is because it's really, really something and quite sophisticated. Uh, you know, and I have also a four, <coughs> a four channel vehicle that I probably will be showing you relatively soon. So here we go. This remote control machines kit's been sitting somewhere since 2014. And now we have it, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, to take a look at. And you can construct. All these other kits um, if you acquire this kind of technology. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, friends. So while looking at the box, I realized that I could build another kind of vehicle. I built a, a car with rack and pinion steering, and I adjusted the gear ratios so that the car would be faster than originally intended and I gave it sort of a uh, fighting spinning disc uh, feature. So let me show you first uh, how it moves. All right, and then rack and pinion steering, which I got to admit, it's not 100% perfect, but I don't think it can be with the way that it's uh, designed, like the, the pieces that I have. I don't think you can get a perfect rack and pinion steering but you can see that obviously it steers and then our war machine and you can do both at the same time actually you can do all three features you could steer it and then go backwards and forwards 
So if you were gonna, you know, make a couple of these, you know, some make little war robots and uh, fight each other, right? You could do that and you could spin it in the other direction. And you could see that spinning. All right. So let me show you how I made this. All right. So the first thing I want to explain to you is the rack and pinion steering. All right. So let's see, that's the red one. All right. So see that? So what I have is I have the worm gear, all right, that actually turns and then that moves through the bevel gear, the big yellow bevel gear. And then that turns your steering implement. So this piece, okay, so you have this rod here that is secure, okay, to the frame. And then this piece slides on top. And then you have the wheels attached to these shafts, all right? And they just free float, all right? And then you have, let me show you an angle here. See how that turns? And you can see the worm gear, as it turns, it moves. This doesn't spin, right? It just moves through it. The bevel gear just moves it across back and forth. The motor for that is this motor up here. So that turns this large gear, turning this small bevel gear, all right? And it, it, what's great about it, too, is I wanted to do... Uh, little gear to big gear, uh, which is what you get with the worm gear. You have little gear turning basically along a big gear, so the steering's not too fast. Because if it's if it, the, if the steering was too fast, it would just come apart. All right. And uh, simply, all right, for the battle mode, you just you know it's just a simple. You mount the motor on top, and and then this big orange gear is not really acting as a gear in any way. It's just acting. To hold the shaft on there and then you know just put those frame pieces on okay so that's simple but then on the um the accelerating portion of it all right so um when you have a big gear let's see that's this one uh turning a small gear you're going to get more speed but when i went with the large gear to the smallest of the gears and i'll show you one of those Okay, one of these, I did try that because that would be the fastest. If I had this large gear turning this small gear, okay, in the chain, that would be a big gear that's moving, you know, it's longer, moving a small gear, it would be the fastest. But the torque goes down, and when I tried it, it really didn't have the torque to move the vehicle very well. So I settled for this uh, secondary size gear, and I got a good combination of speed and torque with that, okay? Okay. And uh, you can see how that's mounted there. <laughs> and there's your batteries in the back and your controller. So there you go. And you can see I can actually, I can put it, uh, I think I could do it from the other side of the vehicle. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty forgiving. as far as where you can point the remote. So it's not going to be as good as a radio frequency remote, but sure isn't bad. So here's that steering again. I'm really happy that the steering worked. Because now this is a you know really efficient way to have steering and only use one motor for the steering, unlike the other vehicle, which used both. And then I have an extra motor to do something else with. Uh, now, I don't have enough shafts. It didn't come with a lot of shafts. If it had more shafts to match the number of gears that it had, I could have it do, you know, something else in the back where maybe it would have another uh, piece that would spin. That would be pretty cool. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with what I got. I mean, like I showed you, it was an $85 toy that I got for $5. So if it's missing any shafts, um, I'm not sure, but it's pretty great. All right, so that's the additional vehicle I just wanted to show you. Thanks again for watching.